Hey guys, good morning. I had a couple things come in this week that I just wanted to show y'all. We've been very, very busy. Obviously, you can tell, I think I shot my last video in this kitchen last week, and this was all just bare drywall where we torn off a brick background. Well, they had done a brick backsplash, like the, they're, they're about half inch thick brick. So that was a pain, got all that off. That was in the last video, you could actually see the bare wall. But now we've prepped all the sheetrock, we've patched everything in, and we went ahead and got all this tiled yesterday, actually. So this morning is grout day, but since we've been doing a bunch of sheetrock here, it really became obvious that I have some poor organization of my basic sheetrock tools. And there's just a few things that you need on almost every single little job that you do sheetrock repairs and little stuff like that. So that is what I bought this for this last week. This just came in from uh, Beaver Industrial last week. This is one of the new uh, SIS 3 TBM. So it's got the little cards loose here in the front if you want to put your business cards in. I haven't done that yet. Uh, but I have them in most of my other ones. This is a little kit I use for my drywall repairs and stuff like that. So this is one of the ones that has the little handle thing here in the front, the SIS 3 style. That is stuck down really hard. I haven't even popped it out before, but it does, yeah, there's a handle there. I don't know why you would ever use that though. Maybe pulling it out from a drawer if you use the SIS AZ drawers for your vehicle or your shop. But for me, it's a toolbox. That's, yeah, that's kind of the deal, yo. I, I don't need to pick it up from the side. But anyway, the top is where these are significant. If you saw my last video about my caulking kit, you know those old toolboxes have the built-in handle and divider in the middle. These new ones, this is wide open. So instead of having the handle built in, you can now connect this to any sustainer. It does not have to be a another toolbox sustainer because there's no handle to deal with as the handle snaps down inside. When you lift this to center and lift it, your handle actually locks. So this won't just swing back and forth. No, the handle's actually rigid once you lift. And then if you want to tilt your handle, it goes back down. And obviously I have my trowel in there, so your handle goes that way. And you can put this handle back in and it'll snap in in either side, whichever way is better for you based on how your little organization's going. Uh, the other cool thing is they put all these these holes around the top. So normally, you know, a toolbox sustainer is sitting on the very top of your stack while you're rolling it around on your CT vac or something like that. So you have all these nice holes to stick your punches, your screwdrivers, whatever you're using constantly right here on the top. Or just plain handy if you want to make something that connects to one of these. All you'd have to do is have some dowels through the back and you could build all kinds of little uh, accessories to go on one of these. So I'm really impressed with this. It's also a whole lot heavier build than the normal toolboxes that I was using before. When you got up above a small one, you know, the normal SIS 1 or so, you're, you're talking a lot of thin plastic in the sides and if you drop one of those, it might be done. But this has got a lot more reinforcement around the top, a lot, a lot heavier duty that way, partly because these are now, there's, there's spots in here where you can actually put your other sustainer on top. Like if I wanted to take one of my organizer sustainers, I can actually put that right on top now. And obviously you have your handles on these, so they sit like that right there. But now you can actually put these together, which is super cool. But I wanted to go ahead and get me a little drywall kit going, and I don't have much in there yet because I just started really throwing it together, and my mud pan is actually right here. And I know that <laughs> that kilted guy over there, he's gonna have something to say, but um, these are pretty much what I use for mine, the little Healy Arc welded pans. I like to have ones that uh, don't have the welds in the corners because they just seem to be a lot easier to clean and work out of. But this box is actually big enough that I can keep my mud pan and everything right down in there. So that's kind of what I'm doing on this deal. I'm a little spread out this morning, but I can kind of give you an idea. Keep uh, my paper tape in there. Obviously, normally my mud box, but we had to wash it last night. I keep a roll of Fibafuse in here. Uh, 
there's occasions when I, I need to be done with a patch a lot quicker or a repair on a rental really fast. And yes, don't have time to maybe do it fully properly with my paper tape. I can put this on and usually be done a little faster. Uh, always this frog tape. I like the really wide inch and a half, two inch frog tape. I can just, I can tape around a patch. I can cover paper the wall so I don't get my texture spread too much. You know, lots of, lots of stuff there. 12 inch knife, little six inch knife. These level five stainless ones, you've seen them in my videos before. I'm a huge fan of these. They just have a nice edge. They clean up beautifully. For me, having clean tools is really important if you can't tell. And then a wider, I don't remember if that's a six or an eight, that might be a five. But, and then I have another one of these that's rougher, just an old cobalt. And this is mainly used, you know, if you gotta peel some wallpaper or something rough, I've got that handy. And then I picked up this deal the other day. Well, let's show you. This, um, I've been using just a Marshalltown one of these, but I went ahead while I was at Sherwin and picked up the Magic Trowel. And this magic trowel is awesome for, for texture, especially patches and whatnot that I've been doing. And I believe anything really, but it's got this little rubber blade on it. So you damp, you put water on this, damp it down a little bit. Then when you shoot your texture on with your texture gun, you can do your knockdown with this just really nice and it won't drag the mud once this is damp. But uh, yeah, this is finished drywall, skim coat walls, erase trowel lines, repair cracks, and do knockdown textures, wet before using. But I just had a Marshalltown before and I wanted to try the Magic one, and so far, I mean, it's been great. I don't know that it's much different than the Marshalltown version, really, but kind of nice, and I think maybe $23, $24 at Sherwin-Williams, something like that. But put it to work this week alongside this new little texture gun I picked up. This is that little Easy Pro texture that you keep seeing people show up with on your groups online. I grabbed one of these at Sherwin and they use these little bags of texture. This is only maybe half a bag left here. But uh, they're real simple. You just squeeze this bag up and mix it right here in the bag a little bit. Fasten it on your gun here. It just threads right on. And then you squeeze the bag as you're shooting it with your air compressor done here and you can control how much texture you want being shot on the wall by how hard you squeeze the bag how big a pieces you want coming out and whatnot so really nice when you're working on rentals and you maybe just have a doorknob hole in the wall or you know any kind of little tiny hole somebody punched at somebody and missed you know happens every day so I use this shoot it on the wall really fast and this texture dries probably less than an hour on a typical repair that I've done. If you put a fan on it, it would be even faster, but uh, shoot this stuff on. It's already mixed to the right consistency in the bag pretty well, and then knock it over, give it about five minutes or so, and then knock it down with that magic trowel. And the finish is just fantastic. Um, try to show you guys a little bit here of a project I did last week. It's just some pictures, but I'll, I'll put them up here for you to see. We opened up a wall uh, in a customer's house and did the little vinyl corners on it and then we matched in the texture with this it took we opened up about an eight foot opening in the wall uh i believe around seven feet tall eight foot or so wide and it took two full bags and a half bag to texture that whole thing in to match their existing knockdown customer very happy with it so for me that's a huge win but you do have to kind of figure out supply for these bags because my Sherwin apparently doesn't carry a whole lot of them. I did ask them. Apparently you can just ask them and they will have more in stock regularly, but very cool addition to this setup. You're talking having a texture setup that literally is just in your hand. And this run, ran just fine off of my Roller air compressor, my little, um, was a JC10 Plus. And I could probably run it off my Air Buddy, really, on smaller patches. It doesn't need that much pressure. You're only talking about 30 PSI. Um, maybe, maybe a little higher if you're trying to do an orange peel. Yeah, here you go. I'll just show you here on the bag. Uh, orange peel is 60 PSI. Knockdown texture is 30 PSI. So most of what I'm shooting is knockdown. So 30 PSI 
you, if you got a couple CFMs at 30, you're going to be just fine to just knock, knock out small patches. You're not texturing rooms with this. You still need your hopper gun for all that. But touch-ups, man, that's cool. Gun is like 60 bucks or so, I believe. And then these texture bags are where they have fun with you. Maybe 7 to $10, depending on where you buy them. But there's some cool YouTube videos out there on how to refill these bags. Mix your texture up, and then you can just get fittings that fit these. They screw on, so you can get fittings that fit this, and then you can just pump these back full of texture and cap them back off. But that's a cool thing is you don't have to use the whole bag. You just recap it, drop it back in here. That's only a half a bag, and I'm waiting on Sherwin to get more in so I can actually stock my box with at least, you know, maybe four or five bags of it so I'm set. But really cool setup. And this is just kind of my, my little rental uh, drywall kit. I'll add a few more things to it as time goes on. But right now, I really like this. I can fit, I can fit really about everything I need for my basic repairs. Just like, well, just like that. Not a big deal. All goes in your magic trowel is a little big to fit in this one, but normally my toolboxes are on the top. If it's not, we'll take this out, and this is my little kit, and I've got all my drywall stuff in here. I need to just walk into a job and get right to it. But very cool little setup. Grab one of those texture uh, pro things if you haven't before. It's called the Easy Pro Easy Pro Texture Gun. Worth throwing in your kit for 60 bucks. Uh, that that's not bad to have. Another option to knock out quick patches. But anyway, yeah, I picked up a few more sustainers. Wanted to get another one of these really long ones over here for organizers. Working on getting all my screws worked out into those. I wanted to organize a little better even than I did in that previous video. So I, apparently I stock a lot of hardware. We're almost like uh, Rich Alexa like to say over on renovations and repair. We're like a rolling home depot around here. But thank y'all for watching. Check it out on the next one. See ya.